Good morning, good morning, and good morning, and good morning, and welcome, welcome, we welcome each and every one, welcome, welcome, let me do some invite, let me do some invite, will you do some invite, will you share please, I pray God console your heart for those who wake up this morning and not feeling good over the presidential race and so far, so I pray that God comfort and console your heart, amen. <laughs> It is my prayer that God will keep you. I want you to know that God will keep you of the apple of his eye. This one dedicated to Sister Imogene. Sister Imogene, this one is for you. This one for you, Sister Imogene. May the Lord keep you as the apple of his eyes. Sister Wendy, good morning. Sister Mariah, good morning. To all God's people, good morning to you. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for tuning in. Sister Dixon, good morning to you. To all God's people, good morning. Good morning. Please share. Please share. Please share. Saints of God, please share. As you know that you are important to God and you are important to us here at LORradio.com. Keep us as the apple of your eyes, God. Keep watch over us. Sister Dixon, good morning to you. Good morning to you. Good morning, Bishop. And how are you this morning? I am blessed. I am blessed of the Lord. I am blessed of the Lord. And I just ask God to keep us as the apple of his eyes. Okay. Yes, so go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead please. Good morning, God's wonderful people. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning with a thankful and a grateful heart. It is not by might or power, but by your spirit and your mercy that we are still alive. Thank you for another day. We give you thanks for the good times and the bad times. We thank you for everything you have done in our lives. Take charge of our going out and our coming in. 
Lord, remember our families, provide and protect them, also our neighbors and friends. Bring peace to your people and hope for those who, are, who have lost hope. For your hope is will and nothing else but your blood and your righteousness. Cover us with your blood, your blood that gives us strength from day to day. Lord, you are our rock in a weary land, a shelter in the time of storm. Lord, we place you at the highest place. Lord, Lord and my Savior, you are our great high priest. Lord, we honor you. You are awesome. Show yourself mighty. Show yourself strong. Show yourself awesome in the midst of our storm. I pray for the anointing upon our lives, for the anointing breaks every yoke. I pray that you reach out and touch us while you pass us by. Those that are sick, I pray for healing because you are the balm in Gilead. You are the great physician. I pray for those who are traveling. I pray for journey mercies. I pray for those who are hungry that they be fed. Your word says that those that are hungry and thirst of the righteousness shall be fed. Lord, open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon your people. Because your word said when the praises go up, the blessing will come down. Lord, hear us, Lord, and we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 Could you read Psalms 1 for us, please? Psalms 1. Psalms 1. Read the, um, Psalms 1. Psalms 1. Yes, please. Yes, Psalms let me get the Bible. Oh, keep us as the apple of your eye, God. Have yes. Yes. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth to the ways of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. We shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. His leaves also shall not wither, and whatever he doeth shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the shaft which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord not the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Wonderful, wonderful. Um... I know that you read very well, but if I may suggest something to you, if I can, yes. when you're reading, you need to slow down. Read it too fast. You read too fast. That's the key. This is where I've seen uh, most of my students, them, uh, yeah. plenty of them do, and they fly through comma. And I'm like, when you read that fast, you're not concentrating upon really what you're reading. You have to take your time. Take your time and get the nourishment out of it. What is this saying? What is saying? And watch this God, the word of God minister to you. The word of God going to minister to you. Not just you. And I'm speaking to everybody around the world. Because I used to make that mistake. I used to read so fast and don't even focus on what I'm, I'm reading. We have to learn to read and concentrate. So sometimes we just need to slow down. There's no rush. I ask God to allow me to slow down. Even when I'm preaching and I want to speak a thousand words per minute. Because I know yeah. I, I, I want to speak a those words. There's so much in me that I want to get out, that I want to put out. And I have to ask myself the question, who is forcing me? Who is rushing me? So I have to learn to take my time and nourish myself. You see, that's why, um, but how they say this again, maybe you can help me. You see, when the animal eat, they go back and what? Chew over their what? They cud. They cud, yeah. Yes, they chew it over. Why they do that? Because they eat too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> All right, you know, so this morning, saints of God, Sister Dilla, good morning to you. Good morning, Sister Danny, good morning. You see, uh, have, have, have you ever had a nice plate of food and you eat it so fast that you want second, you know? And when you go to eat it, and you don't want it, you know? Because you okay. eat too fast. Yeah, and it not digest. <laughs> Oh my God! All right, that's the word. Good morning. That's the word this morning. All right, says of God, just take your time and eat bite size, just bite size. Yeah, Don't bite, bite, bite. Yeah, bite yes, size okay. and enjoy the nourishment of the word of God. Thank you, Sister Dixon. Thank you so much. Yes, God bless and you. thank God you for you. thank you for telling me that. Just take your time. There's no rush, all right? No, uh, even okay, your plan, yes. you don't have to rush. Just take your time. We're nobody rushing you. So just okay. take your time. Take your time. And just slow realize. down. Yeah, slow down. Take it easy. And digest. You know, it's true. They say even when people are driving, when people are driving and they drive too fast, they miss the beauty of the landscape. Yeah, so, I mean, it can happen. 
uh, well, I'm not even worried about what can happen, but you don't see the beauty of the end. Say, it's just like, okay, have you ever re- come to the point where you said to yourself, oh my God, I've been reading this, but I never see this before? It happens to me. It oh, happened to it me because I used to read the Bible. Yeah, I used oh. to read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. Mm. And every year that I read it, I see something that I didn't see. Oh, I wonder Every time, why. I say, oh, my first, this, I'm going to this last year. Have you ever wondered it's why? True. Hmm? Yes, no. but I didn't know. I didn't well, know. Well, um, well, 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 those are some of the little nuggets we need to understand because we were speeding. We were so yes. speeding that we didn't slow down, that we didn't see what we're supposed to see. It's true. So, uh, you know, so that's the beauty. And I pray somebody is learning from this, you know, because that's yes. what we are all about, Sister Dixon. We're about here to help bring changes to people's life because sometimes we miss things because we think too fast or we rush over things. When you rush over things, you're guaranteed to miss things. You yes, guarantee to miss things, you know. And you see, that's why the Bible says, well, we must slow to listen. No, yes, yes. Uh, quick to listen and slow to speak. Slow to speak, yeah. And that's what the Bible is in course. Slow down, don't speak too fast, take it easy, and listen well. And watch the word of God bring nourishment to your life. Glory to God. And I'm speaking to the public, saints of God. This is the beauty of Almighty God. So, Sister Dixon, thank you so much for your understanding, for your patience, for your courage, and for your strength. And may God continue to elevate you. May you transform in his is lightness in Jesus name thank you Bishop you're welcome my dear you're welcome Bye-bye. all right glory to God hallelujah just keep us as the apple of your eyes sister dearly oh my god such a nice thing to see sister dearly all right this morning we're going to talk about God instruction God instruction we talk about the glory of God the glory of God shall be what reveal in you and I've given four points. So now I'm on point, tr- point three. We did point two yesterday. Point two yesterday that the battle was not yours. Point one, if you remember, just reflect on point one. Point one is that you don't belong to yourself. And the faster we come to understand these truths, is the, is the easier or the quickest we learn to submit to God. You belong to the king's man redeemer, the one who redeemed you. So your life belongs to him. And he know how to lead your life, our life, victoriously. God wants you and I to live a victorious life. I said God wants us to live a victorious life. Somebody need to give God a praise. But He's the one who's going to lead us to victory. You cannot lead us. Boy, if I could have managed myself. Let me tell you, Joe. Can I confess? Can I go in the confessional box for a minute? If I could have managed my, my life, I fear properly, I would have never made the mistake them that I made. I know I'm not going to get no witness this morning, but that's all right. But I praise God by myself because I learned to praise God. Even when nobody not praising God with me, I learned to praise God because I know there are angels around me praising God, glorifying God. Oh, glory to God. And I know sometimes you feel like God don't deserve the praise because you're sad in heart. You're sad in spirit. Things not work out the way you are. But I praise God in the good time. I learned to praise God in the bad time. I praise God when I'm up. I praise God when I'm down. You know, as Sister Mariah taught me, Sister Mariah said, Bishop, just remember two mountains can't meet together. Two mountains never meet together. There's a gap between them. But when you and the Spirit of God meet together, come together, join force together, you are powerful. You are successful. Let the Lord guide you with his word. Your life is guided by the spirit of the word of God. Can somebody write that? Can somebody write that down? Because that is for somebody. Because some people don't know how the spirit lead, how the spirit guide. Say this with me. My life is guided by the spirit of the word of God. Can I teach a truth to somebody this morning? Your life is guided by the word of God. Your life is guided by the spirit of the word of God. Somebody need to give God praise. Oh God, I need to play a song here. I need to play a song here, saints of God. Yes, your life is guided by the spirit of the word of God. Can I tell somebody the truth? Hmm? Let me play a little faith song for you. You are going through. 
You wake up this morning not feeling too Some good about the political result that you see is happening. You but I want you to know that that's not the word you are focusing upon, what the world is saying. Your word come from God. Your love come from God. Your guidance come from God. May God comfort you. May God comfort you with his word, with his love. He's a friend. And I know. Yes, I know. He cares for you. Oh, Jesus, come on. Bianca, oh, yeah. good morning. Um, yes, go on. Yes, Bianca, Wendy, and good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Come on, please share for me. Please share. Um, please share for me, please share for me, share, share. God, God have a better answer for you, a reason for you. We're going to talk about the instruction you receive, the instruction you receive. Let me see if I can share this too. I want to share. I want to invite somebody. You see, I want to invite. Will you share? Will you share? Come on, share for me, please. Share, share, share. You got to be a participator. You got to participate in things. You can't just hear it and ignore it. Which most Christian does. Ah! In your life. Lord, I've been through so many misfortunes. I didn't know how to manage my life of fear. But I learned to put it in the hands of God and say, Counsel me, God. Counsel me, God. Counsel me. Somebody say, Counsel me. Blessed is the man. Prosperous is the man. Is the man that walketh not in ungodly counsel. Lord, have mercy. I recommend you to the Lord. That you know that you are his child and God never fail yet. You can't lose a battle. I'm going to show you how to win battle to I'm going to deal with financial battle today. The word of God, oh the word of God give you financial freedom. 
I'm not begging you for nothing. I'm going to show you the word of God. The pattern of God, the instruction of God. And what does the word instruction there mean? Hmm? Information or advice that shows you how to do something. The Bible is God's book of instruction for your life. And the book of life is supposed to show you how to succeed in life. Hallelujah. Ah, Jesus, we worship you. We worship you. Yes, go and keep, and keep the faith for oh, your yeah. a better place for no rain and no flood can bother you my lord my lord my lord, my lord. Mm. just hold thank you Wendy thank your you Wendy. head up high your life is guided I'm by the the, sp the spirit word by the spirit of the word your life is guided by the spirit of the word for as many as receive him what the word the word that became flesh uh, all right, come on, sister wendy I, I think you can do a good job for me please uh, if you can put up john chapter 1 verse 9 Two fourteen 14 for me please put up um, John 1 because I want to show people the word must return re become reality produce result in your life glory to God John John chapter 1 verse 9 to um, 14 for me please put that up for me please if you can thank you so much come on all of you who are going through you're going through something and i want you to know that god loves you and so do i and i want to help you i want to see you succeed yeah it is my greatest ambition to see you succeed in what you undertake many are the affliction of the righteous many are the affliction but god gonna make you triumph over them all come on come on john chapter just just put up the scripture. You don't have to write out anything more than just the scripture. John chapter 1, verse 9 through 14. That's it. They won't read it. Oh, yeah. Just go on and keep the faith. God has a better place. What more sweeter than the word of God, huh? In the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy, and at His right hand, mm, there are pleasures forevermore. Just hold your head up high and try to smile if you can. For I know that the sun will shine again. Hold your head up high, my people. You have not lost the battle. As long as you are living, you have not lost the battle. Doesn't matter what's going on in the world because we walk by faith. We walk by faith and not by sight. All right, so this morning, once again, um, we're, we're dealing with the glory of God shall reveal in you. We give you point one, we give you point two, and we're going to give you point three. Point one said your life is not yours. It is not your responsibility to direct your step, to God, to direct you out to figure out things. Your job is to let God figure it out for you. For God have a plan for your life and your job is to receive the instruction from God. Point two said that um, the battle is not yours. The battle is not yours. Whether financially, the battle is not yours. God know who, how he wants you to succeed in life. Remember, you are student to the Holy Ghost. We all are student to the Holy Ghost. God created you not to fail but to succeed. 
Point three said thou, um, you must receive a word from God. You must receive a word from God uh, in your situation. I want to read, I, 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 I want to read um, something for you. And I believe that most people take for granted. Most people take for granted. Let me read this for you. John chapter 1. Let's come on over John chapter 1. Then I'm going to go back to Genesis. I'm going to talk about your financial freedom. Say, so Bishop, I, you, you know, I... You know, I don't have a job. Nothing good ain't happening for me. Well, I'm going to make you see things differently. Mm -hmm. We're going to look at things differently because it's not what the world is doing, but it's what, rather what God is doing for you. And I think that's what's most important. You need to know your priority. John chapter 1, and I'm going to pick it up from verse 9 for you. Let's read from verse 9. And it said here, John chapter 1, verse 9. Okay, the true light, the true light that give light to every man that was coming into the world. I want you to underline that. The true light. If you remember where our ancestors were, they were in darkness. But here's a light. There was a light that come into the world that give light to your life. And I just want to stop right here and just pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, the crucified risen Savior, let the light of heaven shine in and through the life of your people, through your words, through your words, God, through your word. May their life light up, O oh God. May they become glorious. May they become splendorous, God, in the name of Jesus. May they know that they are beautiful in in your sight in Jesus name so the true light that give life to everyone that was was uh, was coming so what you know so this is uh, um, when Jesus came into the world he came to give light and direction to the life of man to light up the life of man want you to understand that so so what you know verse 10 said he was in the world uh, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize. I, I like that word recognize because I'm dealing with recognize. You need to learn to recognize the law of recognition because what you don't recognize is passing you by. What you don't recognize is passing you by. Remember we talk about recognize. You have to learn to recognize things in the spirit. We recognize things in the physical, but we don't recognize. A lot of people don't recognize anything in the spirit. That means you are blind or ignorant to what is happening in the spirit. There are two worlds. There's a spirit world and there's a physical world. Both are essential for your victory. Both are essential to your victory. And in this invisible world, guess what? When you start to see, it's no longer become invisible, it becomes visible. That's where everything comes from. The things that are invisible are, um, that are not seen, they are eternal. They are eternal. So when God opened up your eyes to let you see the eternal glory, the eternal power, the eternal strength of his goodness, then you know you're on your way to great success because you see something that the world doesn't see. Just like what I showed you yesterday when um, Elisha prayed for his servant, Jehazi, uh, and say, when he said, Master, we are in great trouble. There are 60,000 Assyrian troops, Aramean troops there, there, and they come to capture us. And the, and the man of God said, we are more than those who are against us. What you're seeing with your natural eyes is not the real truth. It's not the physical. It's not the, uh, what I'll say, it's not that it's not the truth. It's not the sustaining. It's not the everlasting truth because something greater than that. And that's in the spirit realm. And I want to take you into the spirit realm so you can see it in a way you have confidence. You cannot have confidence in something that you never see how it works. Hmm? And that's where most Christians, you cannot put your trust in something that you don't know how it works. That's why I, I encourage you to live your life by verification. Yes, you are to live your life by verification. Glory to God. So, so what you know, to recognize him. He came to, um, he came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Verse 12 is where I want to go here now. Watch it now. Verse 12. What's that? Yet to all who receive him, to those who believe in his name, he gave the right or the power to become children of God. 
children born not of natural descent, nor of human descent, but you're born by the Spirit, glory to God, or of a um, husband will, but born of God. The Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. The Word became a living reality. The Word became a living reality. I'm here to emphasize to you this morning that the Word of God will become your living reality. It should be. There's no other reality but the Word of God. The Word became a living flesh, a reality. The Word, the word turned into someone, and the Word is someone. So when you read verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word. It is the Word became the person. Your Word became who you are. Your life is your word. I want you to get that. My born. Mm -hmm. Your word is your born. It's the breath of God that breathe, that give power, that give strength to you. So, uh, so we're going to deal with that now. The word must become. You can't tell somebody that, oh, you read your Bible and you're not getting no substance from it. Then something would have been wrong because the word cannot return void. The word is an omission. Can I tell you something? Ah, uh, oh, God Almighty. The word of God is on a mission to accomplish glorious things for you this morning and forevermore. So that's why we're not listening to just what's going on in the world. Uh, ah, we are more attentive to the Holy Ghost. Can I preach to you like I know it should be? Oh, glory to God. You have to be more attentive to what the Holy Spirit is saying. Because God's word cannot return void. Man's word always have flaws in it. Uh, but God's words are flawless. Can I preach to somebody? Glory to God. The word became flesh um, and make his dwelling among us. Uh, ah, God Almighty. It make his dwelling where? In my heart. Uh, in your heart. Uh, in your children's heart. Even in the president's heart, he's going to change heart. Glory to God. Don't give up. Just keep on praying. Speak those things. Uh, speak those words which are not yet manifest uh, in a person life. Speak it as if it was oh you're gonna be changed by the word of god your life is gonna be cleansed by the word of god your word is your um your word's gonna deliver you're gonna rescue there is power in the word of god to deliver you there is power in the word of god to save you there is power in the word of god to bless you and i'm gonna deal with the blessing part this morning because when the word make is dwelling in you you're on your way to be so successful to be powerful to be mighty to be glamorous to be glorious whatever word you want to hear. ah jesus have mercy come on now let's go to the book of um let me get my note here genesis chapter 26 i'm going to talk about that you're not going by what you see see that's not how you should live you're not going by what you see or what you hear happening in the world you are going by what you hear in the spirit that's where your victory lies. That's where you, your a blessed assurance lies. Can I tell somebody the truth? Glory to God. So let me put this up for you. What it means, you do not walk. You don't live your life by what the noise of the world is. Uh, but by the sound word of the Almighty God, the Holy Spirit at work, speaking in your heart, convincing you, persuading you to say, my word shall not return void to you. Somebody ought to give God. Father, praise um, Second Corinthians chapter five. Uh, you see, the scripture continue to uh, repeat Second Corinthians chapter five and verse seven. I'm just gonna put a verse seven. Cause we walk by faith and not by sight. What you know? Because what your natural eyes see you mm -mm -mm -mm, will make you feel distress. Will make you feel distress. You need the word of God. You need to hear the word of God. As a matter of fact, I'm going to put up another scripture so you understand where I'm going. So you understand how powerful. For those who always hear the word of God but never put it to work, you're going to be different as from today. Let me put up Psalm 107 for you. Come on, because what's going to rescue you, what's going to deliver you, what's going to bring you glory, what's going to bring you healing is the word of God. And so here in the book of Psalms, I'm going to put this up. Um, Psalms 107, glory to God. Get out your Bible, please. Get out your Bible. Your life is going to change. Your life is going to change. Verse 19 and 20. And the word of God read thus. I'm going to quote it for you. Glory to God. 
The children of Israel, let's go there. The children of Israel were in distress. They were in bondage. Uh, they were in crisis. They were in a situation. They were in a dilemma, whatever. Ah, oh, what a catastrophe. Lord have mercy. They were in a situation. But God sent his word and delivered them. Tell somebody, I need to hear the word of God. Move out of my way. I want to hear the word of God. Don't bother me. No, I don't want to hear nothing else. I want to hear the word of God. I want to incline my ears to the, the word of God uh, and that my soul shall live. Uh, my soul shall come alive. Uh, I'm talking about life in the inward man. Somebody ought to give God a praise. Uh, uh, don't, don't be distracted. Uh, this is your time with God. This is your personal time. You have to set the boundary that nobody nobody this um disturb you when you're spending quality time with the lord you have to set that very clear glory to god my time with god that's my time with god i'm gonna reverence it i'm gonna honor it i'm gonna make you respect that so so my people them know okay this is why i choose let me tell you why i choose two three four one two three four five o'clock in the morning to study because you know what nobody calling me that time nobody sending me no message glory to god so i don't have to tell them i don't have to tell them hey listen i don't want to talk to you i can't talk to you right now. i don't have to tell them that because you know something that's what jesus did early in the morning he wake up and he consult his heavenly father before anybody talk to him that's your priority you must learn to set time and not only only do I do that I give you another reason why I do that that's the time I retrieve more from God because there's no distraction there's no noise on the street nobody making noise that time most people are uh, sleeping in their house or on their job so uh, it's quiet in my house it's quiet because my children them are sleeping then uh, if they if they are up they know not to make noise. They know not to knock on my door because they know what? Daddy is communicating with his heavenly father. You need to learn to set a time for you and God, a personal time, and you respect that. All right, so Psalm 107. Come on, do you understand that? Psalm 107. Watch this. I want you to visualize. Use your imagination. That's why, uh, as I as I encourage um, Sister Dixon this morning, as she was reading, you see how fast she was reading? I want her to slow down and start to meditate, to concentrate upon what she's reading because it is the Word of God going to nourish her, give her Thing. That's why I say meditate upon it, to think upon it. So most time people just read and just read. They just fly past and they miss what they're supposed to, to receive. So you don't want that to happen and I don't want that to happen for you too. So watch this now. Watch this now. So the children of Israel were in bondage. So they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. That King James Version said in their distress. We're living in distressful moment. The soul is in distress. And what did they do? They cried out to the Lord and see, let's see what happened. Let's see. Because we are led by the spirit of the word of God. We are led by the spirit of the word of God. Remember, the word of God is not just a word. It's a person. The word of God is not just a word. It's a person. All right. So keep that in mind. So it said here then, they were in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. They saved them. They were in trouble. They were in bondage. They were in crisis. Whatever you want, you want to call it. All right. That's where they was. I watch it now. He sent forth his word to heal them. I want you to underline that. He sent forth his word. So if a person don't literally show up, but God sent a word, however God chose to send a word, that's all I need to do. I need to look out for that word. Tell somebody, I'm on, the, I'm on the lookout. I'm on the lookout. I'm listening attentively for the word of God. Because oftentimes God is speaking, but man not listening. Oftentimes God is speaking, but man is not listening. And I may just want to put up Revelation chapter 2 for you. Um, verse 26. He that have a hears to hear. Huh? Chapter 29. Huh? He that have ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. Let me put that up for your revelation. Uh, you know, Bishop going to teach you from Genesis to Revelation. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Yes. Revelation chapter 2. 
Verse 20, he that have a ears, let him hear what thou art. The Spirit, tell somebody that the Spirit of God is speaking. You got to learn to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I'm giving you key to victory, to succeed. Now, to hear, you have to be listening attentively. I learned something. I have a little kitten. I learned something from him. He don't like noise. I watch him uh, whenever anybody making noise, he move away and he find a quiet place. And I'm like, wow, look at this. He don't like that because you are, he have to live by his sensitivity of his ears. That if anything running up us are making a move, he's attentive to what's going on. He's alert. I come to tell somebody, God said, you are to be alert to the voice of Almighty God. Can I tell you the truth? Uh, you got to be alert. You got to be alert. You got to be alert. And because some of us, we listen more to what the world is saying than what God is saying. You're not focusing to hear God's voice. God's voice makes all the difference in your life. The voice of God makes all the difference to you. Glory to God. So you ought to recognize when God is speaking and God is always speaking. The word of God is ever living and ever active. So you got to listen out for the word of God. M many people don't care for learning. Some people just don't care for learning that much. They're just going to do things their way. But that's not how it works. So watch this now. Verse 20 said, he sent forth his word. What did he send? He sent the word. Now we know this is Christ Jesus. What I just read in, um, in John chapter 1. He came and he dwelt. He make his dwelling among man. So you see, when you read this, you need to understand. Because the Bible is written about one man and one man only. Christ Jesus, the savior of the universe, the savior of mankind. The one who come to redeem, the one who come to purchase, the one who come to buy back your redemption. Huh? So he sent forth his word. Tell somebody he sent forth his word uh, and heal them and heal them. Uh, he rescued them from their grave he rescued them from their grave he rescued them from what situation that they were in now I, 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 I have to go to genesis but i need to set this up the right way so you get it the word of god become healing to your body can i put that up while i'm there let me put that up for your um believe proverbs um proverbs chapter four all right, Proverbs chapter 4, the word of God become life, become life. And, and for those who don't realize it, I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that life started within you now. Spiritual fulfillment in you right now, in the name of Jesus Christ. May the word of God fulfill in your heart right now, the promise of God. All right, so um, Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4, verse, um, let me just put it from verse um, 20, so you'll get this, um, so because he that find it my word, he that find it my word, find it life. I want to show you how to get there, because when life start to um, prevail, when life start to speak to you, when life start to show you what life is, because it takes life to make you have life. Oh, Jesus. To about verse 24, let me just put that, just to be on the sure side, uh, I just want to show you that sense of God. Yes, I just want to show you that. Let me show you that. Let's go. Come on over to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4 here for a second. And I'm going to go Genesis. So you need to know what you're looking out for. You see, you're not going out to be more, just to be motivated. You're, you're listening out for the word of God that's going to bring success to your life. So Proverbs chapter 4. Um, let me see if I can pick it up from verse 20 here. What is it? My son, pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my word. Listen closely to my word. Do not let them out of your side. Keep them within your heart. For they are life. For their life. Or will you underline that in your Bible? For their life. What is life? The word of God. The word of God. Huh? For they are life to those who find them. Watch it now. For they are life. You see, you got to learn to find life in the word of God. I'm talking about finding life, finding victory, finding success through the word of God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Find your strength. Find who you are in him through his word. There is something in the word of God for you. I don't know what is it that you're looking for, but I want to remind you that there is something in the word of God for you. For you 
And what you're listening now for is the word of God that going to bring you out. That going to take you out. Going to lead you out. Not just you, but you and your old generation is coming now. Oh, glory to God. What going to fix your life? What going to cleanse your life? The word of God. What's going to heal you? The word of God. Tell somebody, I need the healing word of God. Oh, glory to God. Can I bring you? Can I bring you to the place where the angel show you the river of the water of life? Ah, oh, come on. It's time for you to come and find life uh, to the word of God. He brought life to the woman at the well uh, and in you shall flow streams of living life water. Life living water. Uh, can I pray for somebody? God Almighty say life stream living water shall flow in and through your innermost being. Symbolizing I come to announce to somebody today. God say your days of dehydration is over. Have you ever noticed when you go to the hospital and they admit you the first thing they do put up an IV put some drips in you because you need some water can I tell somebody tell somebody please excuse me I need some water and when I'm connected to the faucet uh, oh glory to God when I, I, I connected to the throne of heaven glory to God streams of living water flow in me each and every day come on start to drink uh, I come to Jesus just as I am uh, weary one and start drinking out oh God but he replenish he restore oh the God I serve is a God who replenish my soul oh glory to God he refresh my spirit ah oh, God Almighty I want to praise God this morning can somebody please help me praise God lift up the name of God for the word of God for the word of God is a lamp unto my feet come on tell somebody the word is gonna lead me to victory can I tell somebody so the Bible said Ah, keep them within thine heart for they are life to those who find them and held to a man's whole body do you want healing in your body I know somebody need healing this morning I know somebody leading a breakthrough this morning but God your word is bringing that to them oh God can you receive can you accept ah, oh glory to God oh the bird is going to bring healing to you you've been searching you've been saying when God when God, why God? When God, why God? And you go off and you start to say, but God said, now that you find my word, now that you believe in my word, I'm going to pour healing in your body. I'm going to heal your sin sick mind. Anywhere you are hurting, I'm sending the word to heal. Because the word of power to heal, the word of power to deliver, the word of God of power to rescue, and it is all about the word of God. I don't want you to speak nothing else to me, but speak the word to me speak life to me speak the word living life to me that's what i need to hear that my soul may live oh i must have read it in the book of isaiah 55 and 3 incline thine ears and hear and your soul shall live if your soul is dying is because the word is not in it you are no longer in the valley of the dry bone you are in the place where streams of living water abundant of water abundant of rain shall fall all upon you. Oh, there shall be showers of blessing. Oh, send them from above, God. Send showers of blessing, God. Oh, God, remove the people's mind from the things of this world and put it upon you, God, because you are still the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The word of God. Can I put up some more scripture for you? Oh, come on, come on. You're reading the Bible. You're reading the Bible, but you, um, Kevin, good morning to you. Watch this now. Um, Psalm, let's go again. I'm not going there, but you need to read that. Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Um, I might have to go there. I might have to go there. Psalm 119, verse 105. 105 through 107. Uh, come on, come on. Are you with me, people of God? The word of God is a lamp unto your feet. I come to declare you're never going to walk in that. The reason why you're in my because you're not walking in the word. And when you're not walking in the word, can I be honest with you? Can I be brutally honest with you? Can I teach it true to you in love? When you're not walking in the word, you're not walking in life. You're not walking in light. Uh, you're walking in disaster. But God said, uh -uh, you're not going to remain there. Oh, glory to God. Just like the prodigal boy thought he understood the way of the world. 
Father. I'm not here to understand the way of the world. I need to be here to understand the ways of God. Oh, glory to God, because how can a young man cleanse his way by taking heed to the word of God? Tell somebody, my mind is on the word of God. Oh, my hope is in the word of God. My belief is in the word of God. So don't speak nothing else to me. Speak the word of God. Speak life to me. I come to speak life to God's people. God Almighty, let us give God a praise. Glory to God. Lord, have mercy here. And please forgive me if I am behaving bad in your sight, in what you think is bad. Because I know I come to lift up the name of God. I need to show you my confidence is in the word of God. Come on over to Psalm. Go back to Psalm 1. Um, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, come on, look at 105, let me read that for you, let me read that for you, verse 2, 107. Your word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path, God. Tell somebody the word, the word of God going to shine light to your feet. Not even your feet can be in darkness no more unless you're not living by the word of God. I'm not talking about the, the, the knowledge or the wisdom or the word of this world. I'm talking about God's holy word. God's holy word shall be a lamp unto your feet, a light to your path. Watch this now, verse 8. I have taken an hoot. And I confirm it, oh God, um, mm, that I will follow your righteous law. There's no other law that's righteous upon this earth. More than God's word, holy word. Watch verse 7. I have suffered much. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. See, only the word of God can preserve your life. And while I'm there, why not come down to... Um, so, let me see verse 29 come down to 129 come down to 129 to one let me put that up for you again come on we're gonna we're gonna do something now i'm going to genesis say what do you understand that is the word is gonna bring you out tell somebody the word of god if you're not coming out it's because you're not in the word and the word is not in you and the bible be a witness to it that's it that's the only way you're gonna produce harvest so psalms let me put that up again psalm psalms 107 Psalm 119, I'm sorry, Psalm 119, Psalm 119, let me uh, see, I'm moving too fast, verse um, 129 to 136, to 136, come on down with me, let's read, open up your Bible, open up your Bible, I know some of you use the some of you use the um, King James Version. I use both, you know, so you can read. But it's the same thing. I'll explain it to you. It's the same thing. It's just uh, maybe some changes in that word, but it means. So come down to verse 129 here. Look at this, what they said. They said, no. Your statue are wonderful, therefore I obey them. Your words are wonderful, therefore I obey your words. Did you hear that? Wonderful counselor he is. That's why you have a counselor in you to show you the way. You see, the reason you've been fighting the battle in your own strength and the battle is not yours. It belongs to the law. And you're going to see victory made easy through obedience of the word of God. It is through our obedience to the word of God we find victory because he cannot lead you to failure. God cannot lead us to failure. Oh, glory to God. Watch this now. Verse 30 said, guess what? The unfolding, the revelation of the word of God. Uh, uh, the unfolding of your word give light, uh -huh, give understanding. The revelation, the revelation, the manifestation of the word give understanding. Boy, when I plant, uh, when I plant these seeds, well, you know, this been in there for about three years, peas. Well, so when I plant them and I see what it can do, it give me encouragement to plant more because my harvest is about to increase. My barn is about to increase. I'll come to tell somebody, God said, I'm going to increase you through the spoken and living and active word. I'm going to increase your life. You see, nobody is stopping you but you because you have to be fully persuaded of God's word is able to do what it said. And he said, heaven and earth shall surely pass away, but my word will not pass away. Come on. The unfolding of thy words give light. It give understanding to the simple. Verse 31. Open my mouth um, and plant. Right? Longing for your command, God. Mm -mm. Turn to me. Have mercy on me as you always do. 
to those who love your name. God always have mercy to those who obey him. Oh, glory to God. And if you never obey him, now is the time. Look at verse 33. Direct my footstep. Come on, tell somebody, say, direct my footstep. Ah, God said, I'm going to direct you. I'm going to direct your heart, your footstep in everything, your whole being into victory. Finish read that. I got to go to Genesis. Come on over to Genesis. Let me go finish read that. Oh, glory to God. Let me show you success. You want success? I'm going to show you. It's God plan your success. Man plan your demise. Man plan to keep you down. Man plan to use and abuse you, but God plan your deliverance. You need to understand that. And no weapon formed against you shall prosper when you walk in unity with God. Come. Come with me, Genesis 26. I'm going to talk about famine, famine, famine. I believe we are living in perilous time and there is a famine in the land. There is a famine in the land. Genesis chapter 26. Um, can I put this up? I think I'm just going to come up to about verse what? Um, verse 14. Uh -huh. Yes. Um, watch this now. Genesis, let me put this up for you. Let me put this up for you. Genesis Glory to God. Genesis chapter 26. Come on, we're going to show you financial successes. God gave man financial freedom, financial success. You see, man, everything man do, man have a catcher because he want to come back to him. What God want to do, God not going to take back from you. God just want to bless you and make you live a prosperous life. So, so verse 1, uh, verse 1 to about... Um, Say, I could I come down to about um, let me see this here. Wealthy, he became wealthy. Uh, he had men, um, verse 14 to about verse 14. Watch this now. Watch this now. There's a famine in the land, there's a prop, uh, and this famine in the world will have it, but not God. God don't have a famine. God does not have a famine in your life. The world put you in bondage, not God. God take you out of what the world put you in, what the world trying to sink you in, what the world have you to believe. Ah, but you're going to lift up your eyes unto the ills from whence cometh your help. Your help come from God Almighty. Come on, somebody. Come on, Genesis chapter 6. Watch now. Now there was a famine in the land beside the earlier famine. Maybe I need to get the King James Version because you need to know. Watch now. From generation, from Abraham, there was a famine where was the famine in abraham days and here is his son uh, meeting a famine and god rescued them out of famine but let's see how god rescued them out of famine hmm? come on let me get the king james version come on pray for me pray for me somebody glory to god tell somebody i'm coming out i'm coming out because once i give you the proof once i give you the proof once i give you the evidence 26 and say no and he said here now from the King James Version, Isaac um, meeting King Abimelech. Watch this now. And there was a famine in the land beside the first famine. So there, there was a first famine, a second famine. <laughs> Glory to God. And watch this now. Mm -hmm. So now uh, beside the first famine that was in the days of Abraham. Watch now. And Isaac um, went to Abimelech, king of the Philistine. Watch now. Unto God. Watch now. And the Lord appeared unto him and said, Go, watch now, go not down to Egypt. What? Go not down. What a crazy instruction. Can you imagine God showed up to him and said, And in his natural said, Wait a minute, there are food in Egypt, and you're telling me not to go down there? Boy, a war start. A war start. He said, Go not down to Egypt. Don't go down there. Don't go to Egypt, Isaac. You follow my instruction. I'm the God that lead people out of famine. I'm the God that take people out of, out of poverty. I'm the God that lead people out of distress. I can't get anybody to praise God with me this morning. So I just praise him by myself. Uh, uh, somebody had to give God a praise. I'm telling you, you're coming out. You're coming out by a word from God. In everything you do before you move, say, God, give me a word. I need a word to come out of my situation. I need a 
a word to come out of bondage. Ah, it is the word of God going to lead you out. Tell somebody how a life is led by the spirit of the word of God. Ah, come on somebody. I must have read it in the book of John chapter 6 and verse 63. The flesh profit for nothing. Ah, but the word I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Come on, I'm applying spirit and life to you this morning. Glory to God. John chapter 6 and verse 63. You got to apply yourself to spirit and life, the word of God. This is how it is ordained for you to live your life. It is ordained for you to live your life by the word of God. Not by what you feel, not by what your pastor is saying. Because most of them, they, they don't understand what the word is saying. Your job is to say, okay, my pastor, I respect you. Pope, I respect you. Bishop, I respect you. But what does the word of God say? Because many people are living their life in fear of man, not reverence fear of the Holy Ghost. They fear man and all throughout Israel life you find that pattern of behavior. They were afraid they throw them out of the church. Well, uh, I've been thrown out of many places all my life. Being abandoned by my family. Oh, God Almighty, but the Lord take me up. I don't know who I'm talking to. Ah, oh, when the world look down upon you. When your mother and your father forsake you, there's a God. Say, I love you and I will take care of you. All you have to do is to receive God's love. So God said to him, say, wait a minute. Don't go to Egypt. Don't go into Egypt. Dwell here. Dwell here in the land which I tell thee of. Oh my God. I'm a, where you're sojourning. He said, don't go down there because what? Now wait a minute. Now, the, 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 but my natural mind cannot fathom. My natural mind cannot understand because in my mind I know where the food is at. But maybe the food is here, but that's not where God have your food. That's not where God have your storage. That's not where God have your abundance. God know the plan he have for your life. And he know how he want to lead you to success. Can I bless somebody? Come on, you want to read it. So watch this now. Sojourn in this land and I will be with thee. And I will bless thee, come on, and I will bless thee, for unto thee, for unto thee, and unto thy seed. Uh, God said, I'm not only going to bless you, I'm going to bless your generation. I'm going to bless your descendant. I'm going to show them so you know the will. I'm going to show you how to make them know the will of God, how to reverence me, how to respect me, that know that I am the Lord thy God that lead you out of poverty. There is no problem that your God can fix. Somebody need to give God a praise. Come on, start to share the message to somebody. Tell somebody. No, we have to go by the word of God. See, that's why many people read and just read so fast. And not concentrating, not meditating, not giving careful thought to what they're reading. So they miss the pattern. And then you see, they will say, wait, wait a minute, you know, oh, I've been reading this, but I never see this one, you know. You know why you've been chewing your cut too fast? Why don't you slow down? Why don't you slow down and let the Lord reveal his truth? Take your time. There's no rush. There's no rush. There's no rush. What you need to do now that you're making sure that you're walking in the light of the word of God. Some of us, we drop our weapon. We drop our weapon, which is the word of God. You drop your weapon and you're following the, the, the wisdom of this world. You're gonna be, your life will be destroyed. So... So look what God said to him. Said, "No, I'll be with you, and unto thy unto thy seed I will give. I will give all these countries. Uh, I will perform an oath. Watch this now. I swear unto your father. Ah, God, I, I swear something to your father. And what I swear to your father, I'm gonna make it happen for you too." Lord have mercy. Come on. I don't have much time. I want to go up now. So, so God tell him not to do this, not to do that. Stay here. Because I'm going to show you. And all he had to do, all Isaac had to do is just to obey God. I know it was not easy. It is difficult because when, when your life is threatened by poverty, it's not a good feeling. I can tell you that. When you're belly hungry. And you think you're going to die. You know, like when I used to teach my kids them how to fast. They say, oh, daddy, I can't fast because I think I'm going to die. Because they think it's food that sustains them. That's, a lot of people believe that. 
But no, there's a God greater than food. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. Are you with me? And my kids say, no, daddy, I can't fast for long. I'm like, okay, how many hours can you fast? Well, daddy, I think I can go about two hours. I'm like, okay, that's a good start. You can go for two hours. The next, next couple of times, we, we stretch it. See if we can stretch it until when they, they learn, oh, wait a minute, I can go to even 12 hours and not eat it. But the key is not because you're Put your food aside. Can I? I, 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 I just. I don't want to go there, but I have to go. The key is not because you put your food aside. The key is is what you want God to do and what you want God to reveal in your situation. See, remember the devil, the adversary tried to use food to defeat Jesus Christ, Lord God Almighty. Mm, 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 mm. Can I tell somebody the truth? The devil trying to use food to defeat Christ Jesus. Many have been defeated because of their belly. Many are defeated because of their belly because the devil knows that all they want is some food. Glory to God. Are you with me, saints of God? Are you with me? But your God know that you need some wisdom. You need his word to heal, keep you healthy. He become health to a man's old body. So, watch this now. Watch this now. Watch this now. So God promised him everything and to bless them right now. And the nation, the seed and shall all the nation of the earth be blessed through this man. Because, watch this now. Because... Because that God, Abraham's seed, uh, bless Abraham, but he uh, obey my voice. He obey my voice and he, he kept my charge, my commandment, my statue, and my law. Isaac dwelt in God, righteous now, and the man of that place asked him of his wife. Now, the same pattern, if you notice, there's a pattern here where um, Abraham said Sarah was that his wife. Isaac came and repeat that. Uh, life is all about a repeat and stuff like that. He said, no, that's not my wife, you know, because uh, Rebecca was very beautiful because she was fair to look upon. Reverend, reverence to respect. All right. So, but I want to come up to verse 12. Come on up to verse 12 with me. Then Isaac saw in that land remember what was happening what was the chance here famine famine was in the land say famine was in the land god bid him not to go where food is at because god know how to sustain god know how to keep so god said to him say don't go down there so watch it now so isaac obey god mm -hmm. isaac obey god and so watch it now so isaac saw in that land and receive in that same year a hundredfold, and the Lord bless him. He received. Do you know what is a hundredfold? He became mighty wealthy because of God. Do you get that? God gave him an instruction. Say, he received an instruction. He received. How many see that? How many see that? He received an instruction from God what not to do. So you need to learn. God, God give you instruction. That's why the Bible is the book of instruction. Say this with me. The Bible is God's book of instruction. God. Uh, mm, mm, mm. The Bible is God's book of instruction, and I told you what instruction means. Information or advice that teach you how to do something. Ah, we're going to have church now. Can we have church now? Can we have church? Can we have church now? Watch it now. If you have heard God's instruction, if you have received God's instruction in your situation, a bound to take you out, a bound to bless you, a bound to heal you. Because we see the evidence through the word. So he obeyed God. He obeyed God. He, wa he was in what? A crisis. A famine. And you know famine. A lot of things cause famine. I'm not even going to go into the logistic of it. What caused famine right now. But he was facing a famine. But you would have said. But wait a minute. But. In father had plenty things. 
Yes, his father have it. But bless the child that have his own too. Because God want to bless us individually. God want to bless us collectively. So God have to teach him as he teaches father. So would you say today that God is your teacher? The Holy Spirit is your teacher, is your guide and counselor. The one who know all things. The one who know to make you win. The one who know to make you succeed in all that you undertake. So, watch it now. The instruction you receive, the instruction you receive in your crisis determine the outcome of your life. And not only do you receive it, if you receive it and never put it into practice, you're never going to come out. Do you see what caused people to be in body? He obey God, he obey God. Obedient is better than sacrifice. He obey God. And the Bible said, let me read this again for you. Watch this now. So the Bible said here, verse 12, let's read this again, verse 12. Isaac plant a crop in the land, and the same year he reap a hundredfold because the Lord blessed him. The man became rich. The man became what? The man became what? Wait, 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 wait. He was in a famine. Then what happened? How did he come out? See, you can't just read and run through the Bible. You have to start to question things, investigate, inquire of him. How did he come out? Because he obeyed God. God gave him an instruction. Remember the Lord appeared to him and said, don't go down to Egypt. Don't go to into Egypt. I know food is down there. God knows where it's at. But God said, guess what? I want you to trust me. Then you lead your own life. And the man became very rich. Verse 13. The man became rich. Speaking of Isa. And his wealth continued to grow until he became wealthy. Did you hear that? Did you hear that? Huh? Do you see that God has something good in storage for you when you obey God? Can you see that? Can you feel that? Can you dig it? Huh? So it tells me. And I believe um, John 15 would have con um, confirmed this statement. Say, Unless you abide in my word and my word abide in you, you cannot produce fruit. Can I put that up for you? Read it. You, you have to put it. Put it together. Put it together. See what produces success. Your disobedience does not produce success. And so if you're not succeeding, guess what? You just have to tell yourself, God, forgive me. Of my disobedience. I ain't even gonna touch Deuteronomy chapter 20. I'm not even gonna touch it because that's what Deuteronomy 28 would have confirmed to you too. Are you an obedient person? Can you follow instruction? Can you follow instruction? Ask yourself this question Can I follow instruction? Because some of us only have itchy ears. You only want to hear something, but you're not doing nothing with what you hear. He did something. He did something. Say, so he did something. I want to tell you that this morning. He did something with what he hear. Faith without work. Can I, can I quote that? Faith without work is dead. I believe that is in the book of James. Uh, uh, James chapter 2 verse 14. Faith without work is dead. Uh -huh. So who's stopping you? Maybe you're not doing what God bid you to do. I'm not here to judge. I'm only here to teach. He did what God bid him to do. The man became rich. Tell yourself, obedient is better than sacrifice. He did. Are you doing? I, I, I did say I'm going to put up scripture. Come on, let me put up scripture. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Lord Jesus, Sister Mariah said, don't sell your birthright. Don't sell your birthright. That's right. Don't sell your birthright. Your birthright is to obey God. That's it. Watch this now, John chapter 15. Come on, we're going to put them together. So, so when you read your Bible, you say, wait a minute, uh-huh. And you go practice and see that. John chapter 15, verse um, 1 through, you can go, um, go up to about 10. Mm -hmm. yeah, read the entire scripture too. Deuteronomy, you want to read Deuteronomy? The blessing that come through your obedience. So don't, don't, don't blame people. Look at you and ask yourself, am I being obedient to God? Or am I being disobedient? Ah, Jesus have mercy. You know, you know, because if I tell you, you're going to be mad at me. Deuteronomy chapter 28. Um, 28 verse 1. Um, I think you can go up to verse um, 1 to about 12. Yeah, read it. Read it there. Huh? The blessing going to overtake you. But the blessing only manifests itself by your obedience. So God is waiting on your obedience. When you surrender, when you submit to the word of God, God said, this is where I'm going to elevate you. 
because now you can carry out my instruction. Jesus came here on assignment to carry out the Father's instruction, not his own. Not my will, God. Not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, God, but thy will be done. Are you with me? So, here is Isaac became very rich because what? He obeyed God, the instruction God gave him. Did God give him an instruction? Did you all see that? Don't go down to Egypt. That's an instruction. So, a word of faith. Now, I want you to look at it. A word of faith is not just a word of faith. It's a word of instruction. When God speaks to you, God gives you an instruction. When you speak to your children, then what do you give them? An instruction. An advice. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. That's an instruction. It's the word of faith, but it's an instruction what you should do from what you should not do. You need to know your do's from your don'ts. What God want me to do from what God do not want me to do. Boy, if you can rightly divide that, believe me, you are unstoppable. You are unstoppable. Glory to God. Let me play a song for you, then we come back. Um, come on. This little song is a faith song. And we love for you to just sing this one right along with us. And say, This is my song. I sing right along with Lisa. I know the Lord will fix it for you. The Lord will fix it. But you gotta do something. You gotta do something. I know. Live by his command. All right, so now, all right, we're going to get back to the music. Now, now look at this now, saints of God. Let's see how he really becomes successful. First, the Lord appeared to him. The Lord communicated with him. He hears, he listened, and he applied. I want you to write those three words down. You have to hear, listen. Because when you hear and you listen is when you're going to apply yourself to it. This is what the Lord said to me. Thus said the Lord. So he hear, he listen, he do. He apply himself to what he hears. My question to you, are you applying? Are you applying yourself to what you're hearing from the word of God? I, as I read it for you and I show it to you, are you going to apply? Are you going to go back to your wandering stage? There's no time to wander. It's no time for you to wonder. It's time for you to obey. All to Jesus, I surrender. You must surrender your all to God and say, God, I know you have a better plan for me. I know you have a better plan for my life, better for me. The sins of God, let me tell you something. If I, if I, you know how they say this term, um, if I know then what I know now, now that you know it, apply yourself to it now. Don't just tell me, oh, if I know then. You didn't know it then, but now you know it, apply yourself. You don't know what's going to bring you tomorrow, but I know a guarantee it's going to bring you great success. When we obey God's word, if I could have managed my life when I thought I could have managed my life of fear, I would not have made all the mistakes that I make in life. If I had listened to my father's instruction, if I had listened to God's instruction, if I had understood God's instruction, I would have not made the mistake them that I made. You might have said, Bishop, I agree with you that. Bishop, I agree with you with that too because if I had known, if I had understood, and I know we all do things out of ignorance as the Apostle Paul acknowledged it. He said, I did out of ignorance and unbelief. Well, I'm here to show you God loves you and God is going to take you out of poverty, the famine that you're in. Remember when the Bible said, um, I have to find this scripture. He said the time was coming when the land would go through a famine, not a famine, not a famine for food. 
You're in famine because you don't know the word of God. Or God is talking to you and you're ignoring it. It is the word of God that takes you out of famine. Would you write that down? Will you write that down? It is the word of God going to lead me out of my famine, out of destitution, out of my poverty, out of my lacking. The word of God shall enrich my life. Glory to God. All right, so let me just move up because I have to go someplace because I want to set this up for tomorrow morning. All right, so watch now. Beloved, he that have a ears to hear, let him what? Lear. How do you hear? You can't hear what you're not paying attention to. You just cannot hear what you're not paying attention to. He that have a ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So now you know that the Spirit is a walking communicator, a living communicator, always revealing truth to people. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. And I put up the scripture for that already. Moving along, moving along. Got to go some places because I want to show you more evidence. Watch this now. Watch this now, saints of God. It is the word of God. That you receive and obey. Did you see that in um in Isaac life? You see, that's what most people don't know. They just read and just go on. Mm -mm. Watch now. It is the word of God that you receive and obey is going to get you out of your situation, out of your crisis. Did the word of God that when God appear to him and tell him, I know God may appear in different ways to you, but I know he speaks to you through the spirit of God. Watch now. He hear the word of God. He received the word of God. He act upon the word of God. I took him out of famine. Did he become rich? Did he become wealthy? What would your answer be? Yes or no? So we need to realize that it is the word of God. Say this with me. So you see, all the time you had jump on a gallant in a church and a run around church uh, and you didn't hear nothing and it never manifest nothing. Maybe, maybe so another spirit was talking to you. That's why I so thank God for the written word of God. That I can verify, I can validate, glory to God, I can validate what is happening through the written word of God. It is written. It is the word of God that you receive and obey that's going to get you out of your situation or your crisis. What have you been looking for, man? All you need is an instruction from God. That's all you need, an instruction from God. And so, and so watch this now, watch this now, watch this now. The Bible says, the step, Psalms 37, 23 and 24, the step of a righteous man, a good man is ordered by God. Are you with me? The step, the step, huh? God is directing your step. Would you say God direct my step? Take over my step. You direct where I go. You tell me where to go, what to do, how to do it, what to say, how to say. Come on. Come on, saints of God. It's the word of God. I'm teaching you the word of God. So, Psalms 37, verse, um, verse 23 through 24. The step of a righteous man is ordered by God. Who is, who, who is directing your decision? Who is directing your decision? Is it you? Then if you're greater than God, continue. I'm just being sarcastic right here. Um, if you can direct your own affair, then you don't need God. But I know Jesus loves you so much. God loves you so much that he promised to put a comforter inside of you. A counselor, a wonderful counselor. The spirit of truth to guide you to victory. You should not be feeling. We should not be feeling. But only because we're not paying attention to the word of God. We pay attention to our circumstances, to our emotions, to our feelings, and ignore the word of God. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's wrong. So watch this then. Watch this now. Your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. We gain financial freedom. Watch this now. Did he gain financial freedom? Let's reason. Let's read. Did he man gain, gain financial freedom? And, and in those days, it wasn't really money having a cattle thing. You know, he planted his harvest. He plant. He work his land. The Bible says, he that, he that worketh his land shall have abundant of food. Uh, but he who chase after fantasy lacks sense shall come to poverty. The man obey God. He trusts God. He believes God. And God make him become wealthy. Is that your desire from God? 
God can do it, but you're going to have to submit to God. You're going to make God take over the wheel. You have to let God steer you to victory. All right. So, I want to go to uh, Genesis chapter 32. Now, we know that this is Isaac. I'm going to go to his son, Jacob. I'm going to go to his son, Jacob. Watch it now. And this man, Jacob, let me put up this for you. Um, Genesis chapter 32. Jacob have an issue here. Jacob working for Laban. In father-in-law. And in father-in-law rob him out a wealth for 10 different times changing salary. I'm going to show you a Bible. I'm going to show you the pattern is God made man wealthy. Now we know people can take up schemes and they have to make themselves wealthy. We see the murder of scheme. He tried to get wealthy, rob people. And what happened? He spent his life in prison, lose everything that he have. I'm not rejoicing over no man's misfortune. But I'm just trying to show you, don't go the wrong way. Let the Lord be your guide. Let the Lord be your light and your salvation. Genesis, can I put that up for you? Glory to God. Genesis chapter... Uh, Genesis, Genesis, um, oh, S -I -S. Genesis chapter 32, you want to see success? Come from God. Genesis chapter 32, verse 1, we're going to go all the way, up. I, 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 I'm not sure, I think it have about 40 something verse. Let me just take a look over there first, because we're going to do some reading. You know, we're going to do some reading to about um, how many verse that have 30, uh, maybe about 32 verse. Um, yeah, you need to do some reading. Make, make this be your homework. Make this be your um, homework because I'm not going to do all of it today, but I'm going to do a portion of it. Glory to God. Verse um, 32 verse. You want to read that? So uh, we're going to talk about... Watch this now. So, I, I, because of what my intent is to show you four generations of blessing. We see Abraham was blessed because he obeyed God. We see Isaac was blessed because he obeyed God. We see Jacob was blessed because he obeyed God. And you're going to see Joseph blessed because of he obeyed God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So, it is for you to decide what do you want to do now. Do you want to obey God? Do you want to come out of famine? Do you want to come out of bondage? And if you do, if you say yes to it, all you got to do, all to Jesus, I surrender. I see my wrong God. Heal my heart. Show yourself strong through my obedience to your word now, God. That's all we need to do. And watch God. Watch God. And remember, Bishop is out of time, but never out of message. We are going to start this tomorrow morning. Um, not tomorrow morning. Friday morning. Yes. So just meditate. Read the scripture. Look at it. How Jacob become wealthy. Because Laban robbed him ten times out of his heart. Your boss may be robbing you. Your boss may be cheating you out of Don't underpay you. But there's a God. I said there is a God who know how to elevate you, how to reward you, how to bless you, how to pay you. When you obey God, God will elevate you in the mighty name of Jesus. You are right Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to read the Bible scenes of God. See, that's why I don't want to go too much in it. And I'll give you homework to go study that you may see it for yourself. Say, so wait a minute, there's a pattern here. Obedient produce successful result. Obedient produce successful result. But you need to hear what God said. For you to come out of any situation, you need to a, a, a word of instruction, a word of faith by God. Abraham, leave your father's um, household. Go to a land. Because the famine was in, you see, Genesis chapter 12 from verse 10, you see there was a famine. But you notice when God came to Abraham and said, guess what, leave your father's so house. There was an instruction, there was a word given, and he obeyed, and God credited unto him as righteousness. Saints of God, 
Bishop will be back tomorrow morning to show you how to overcome poverty. Famine. Lacking. There's no lack in your God. There is no lack in God. God wants you to be blessed when you obey. So we're going to talk about the fourth generation of financial blessing. There is no situation in the Bible that ever happened where God never showed up and gave a word and instruction. I can start name quite a few to you. Do you all remember when time Peter was in prison? Ready to face execution. You may be, may be on death row even right now. But when God intervened, angel joke you on your side. Hey, come, wake up. Wake up, get up, get your shoes, get your sandals, get everything. The gate is open. Go through, man. Go through, go through, go through, go through. Sure, Lord have mercy. Go through, huh? Because what? He get a word of instruction. And that word of instruction leads to freedom. Prosperity. That's the word of God for you today. There always a word from God. For you to hear and magnify in jesus name god bless you god bless you please share please share please share the word please share the word please share the word i gotta go gotta go got some things to do got some things to take care of but uh, uh don't forget tomorrow morning oh tomorrow morning guess what guess what do you all know what happening tomorrow morning communion get ready get ready get ready because this gonna bless you communion gonna bless you oh my god communion tomorrow morning tomorrow morning we're gonna have communion with god almighty ah oh, you're gonna eat his flesh and drink his blood and watch him life manifest in you it's communion morning tomorrow get your stuff ready get your stuff ready jacob become rich with the cattle them all streak uh, when he went and negotiated i'm gonna show you when god negotiate your salary for you no devil can stop it say that with me when god negotiate your salary, somebody i don't know it somebody might be going on that interview i i what you need to say god negotiate my salary for me glory to god because what you know because every time jacob and laban make a deal about his salary Laban robbed him out of it. But the night God showed up on Jacob's favor. Can I tell you the truth? I'm showing you financial liberty, financial freedom. The night God showed up and said, Hey, all right, J Jacob. Now, it, it, it changed his name now. Israel, my son, my prince. Hear what you do now, my prince. I want you to strip bark of almond tree and make streaks in it. And when the animals them are mating, you put it in the water, they go come out straight. But I want you to go negotiate with um, your, your, your father-in-law and tell him all the streak animal will be yours for your salary. Plan sound good to um, Laban because Laban know there's not much streak animal out there. But Laban don't know what God have in mind. Ah, your enemy don't know what God have in mind and in storage for you. You know. So God said, now, hear what I want you to do. I want you to go negotiate. And we know that negotiating does not always meet um, expectation. But, but what you know, God negotiation supersedes expectation. You got to get that. God negotiation. What God tell you to do is going to supersede your expectation. <laughs> Jesus of mercy. Just like Isaac became rich. Isaac became rich because he obeyed God. He risk not disobeying God to go down to Egypt and become rich. So God said, hey, Prince, my prince, I want you to go to your um, Laban because I have seen how he had robbed you, cheat you out of your salary these 10 times. But hear what, how I want you to go negotiate with him. Tell him. See, God gives some crazy instruction. All the streak animal, he could have been there wrestling. What the streak animal? There's not much out there, God. So don't worry about what's not there. I know what I can do. You need to know what your God can do for you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, Jesus. And so watch this carefully. So he said, guess what? When the animal them are in eat, when they are going to mate, I want you to strip bark, make streaks of it. And when they see the shadow of it, they will give birth to streak animal. And 
But before this happened, I don't want you to go make that deal. I want you to go tell him way in advance. And when Laban said, yeah, man, very good deal. She could shake with Anpan this no man. She good deal. You take all the streak animal for your side. Sound good. A man said, this sound good. But God is up to something. So good. So they shake upon it. Jacob knew what God have in mind. Laban don't know. When God wants to take down your enemy, God knows how to give you an instruction to take down your enemy. If poverty stand in your way today, God knows how to bring it down. Every mountain shall be brought low. You and I need a word from God. Jacob hear a word from God. What he, he get an instruction from God what he should do. God tell him, go, go, you go negotiate with him. Before the plan even manifests. Go negotiate. Tell him all the streak animal will be yours. All the spotted animal. Oh, good deal, brother. Boy, boy, you're smart. <laughs> That's what in, 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 in Laban mind. Because he knew there's not much out there. But God have a plan. A victorious plan. For your finance. I said God have a victorious plan for your finance. So God said go negotiate. Go talk to him. Go reason with him. He agree upon it. And when... In a few months later, Jacob become multi-millionaire because of what God does. And he obey the instruction given to him. Can you imagine if he, he did sit down and question, God, this is an instruction. I'm crazy, you know, God. God, this doesn't make no sense, God. You show me there's not much out there, God. You see what your natural eyes can do to you? Can blind you from the things of God. But when faith speaks to you, you need a word of faith to come out of your crisis, out of your situation. You need a word of faith to come out of your situation. And when you receive that word of faith, when you put it into practice, I say, when you put that word of, of faith into practice, that's what that telling me. A lot of you, a lot of you not obeying God. It didn't make no sense when God said to me, open up this radio station, it was going to cost me all of this money. I didn't even know where I was going to get it. But I decided I was going to empty my account. I'm going to up, obey God. And, I, 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 and yes, I, I, I'll be honest with you. And I don't want to use the word struggle. There, were, there are times I don't know how I'm going to pay the bills. To run a radio station, it costs a lot of money. It costs a lot of money. But you know something? By the grace of God, we are moving on. And I know something mighty good. Because our God is watching my obedience, my commitment to him. And I believe it's going to pay off. Whatever God bid you to do, do it. Whatever God bid you to do, just do it. You see, God don't need the whole world to bless you. God know how to use one person to even bless you. God know the reason why he put you with certain people. Look, I, I, I say, watch it. You're going to see Joseph's life too. Men put him in prison for crime he didn't commit it. Uh, but everywhere he go, the favor of God was upon his life. Uh, I just stop by to tell somebody that God favor is a year of favor upon your life. Uh, from this day forth and forevermore, it's time to set prisoners free. But you need to hear the word of God. There was a word that come to um, the apostles. Peter in prison get up and get up and get out the gate is open there had to be a word release in your situation see some of you are just going to church just to feel good for feel good I'm not there for feel good I told you I'm not there for feel good I'm there to be uh, to be taught uh, can you teach me can you teach me let us reason together and when you can do that you're going to see victory. You're going to see what obedient means to you. See, some of you, when God tells you to give or to do something, you rebel because that don't make no sense. And you make excuse. You just got to obey. God will give some crazy instruction that don't make no sense. It didn't make no sense when God gave, gave Abraham that instruction. Go take Isaac and, and, and sacrifice him. It didn't make no sense. It's crazy. God, you mean all this time I want this child and you know you tell me sacrifice him to you? Yes, I'm telling you that. And through Abraham obedience, God said, uh-uh, I see now that you're willing to obey me. 
touch not the Lord. Look behind you. There's a ram in the ticket awaiting a long time. But to test your obedience and your loyalty, your commitment to me, I got to prove it. How oh, God prove things? Can God prove your commitment to him? Ask yourself. Ask yourself. I just want you to reason within yourself and tell me because I believe I'm waiting on testimony. I'm waiting on testimony to come. God bless you. God bless you. See you um, communion morning tomorrow. Get your stuff ready in Jesus' name. Keep the, restore again.